Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Thursday, September 2nd. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Minnesota game is Checks Watch today. The game against Michigan in 86 days. I've had to look that up. Number of days until September 2nd for so long. Like the math has gotten real, real easy recently, which is nice. Uh, I am here outside what is now Huntington Bank Stadium, used to be TCF Bank Stadium. Joined by Buckeye Scoop beat reporter Tony Gutterman this morning. Tony, I guess let's start with the weather. Everyone, you know, everyone is always looking for something to panic about before the first game. The weather was the topic of panic much of this week. Uh, I'm going to give you an updated hour by hour forecast from weather.com. Uh, 71 and cloudy at kickoff with a 20% chance of rain, winds of 10 to 15 miles an hour. By 10 o'clock, which is three hours into the game, up to a 40% chance of rain, but again, like 10 to 15 mile an hour winds. It's going to rain, and when you look at the overnight forecast, it's like, oh yeah, it's going to rain. But that's at midnight, the game's long over. So it doesn't sound to me like anything that people necessarily need to be real freaked out about. Well, I'm a little freaked out because that's when we're going to be recording our post-game show, probably out in the rain. <laughs> we, we, may be, we may be inside a press box or uh, underneath a, a concourse or something like that. But other than that, for the football players, mm. not for us, okay. for the football players, that seems like a night that sh- where the weather shouldn't impact the, the game too much. Yeah, you get to do what you came to do, follow the game plan. You have as, as good a conditions as you could hope for, and then the best team wins. You, you don't have to worry about the random weather screw-ups that that just can ruin a game. Now, they did practice a couple weeks ago in the rain. A steady downpour, they stayed out there and practiced. So they did at least get one rainy practice in if something does happen late in the game. And, and they will practice dunking footballs in water and having the running backs carry and the quarterbacks and the wide receivers carry those wet balls. That's something they practice. This is not going to be the first time they play in rain. This is not a team from a dome going outside for the first time all winter or anything like that. I, I, that just doesn't seem like that's going to – that was something that was a concern earlier in the week, but it hasn't really – unless the forecast changes, which can happen, but unless the forecast changes, that doesn't seem like it's a big concern. Buckeyes are going into this game as a two-touchdown favorite. So I'm going to ask you two separate questions here. First one, if instead of winning you know, the 14-point spread – if Ohio State wins big, if Ohio State wins by 28, 35 points, what's the recipe to make that happen tonight against the Gophers? I think like 300 yards rushing, 270 yards rushing, we're just establishing that running game, averaging six or seven yards a carry, and that then allows you to do everything else on offense. And C.J. Stroud doesn't need to lead the charge. He can throw 22, 25 passes, and that's going to be plenty because some of those are going to go for big gains. But if you can establish that run, and whether it's early or second, third, fourth quarter, if it's you know 200 yards rushing in that in the second and third, third and fourth quarter, where they just wear the Gophers down, I, I think if Ohio State wins by three or four or five touchdowns, they're going to have 300 yards rushing to show for it, and that's going to be a big reason why they're. It's going to be a. It would be a blowout. And you probably also have to get Minnesota behind. If it's 17 nothing in the second quarter. Minnesota is not going to be able to rely on the run like they probably want to be able to, to at least some, some degree. If you can get them into you have to throw the ball kind of situations and make them more predictable, that may create some issues for the Gophers as well. If, if Minnesota can kind of stay balanced and they're able to run the ball and pass the ball, and I think there are questions on both of those to some degree. We went into a bunch of those on the Buckeye Weekly podcast that we recorded yesterday afternoon. You can find that. Uh, wherever you find fine podcasts and also ours, uh, but you know we, we talked about about that as a you know something that Minnesota is going to have to do is they're going to have to show that balance. They can't just run the ball because I don't think they're going to just be able to run the ball, and I don't think even though Ohio State's defense backfield is not certainly the strength of the defense, the wide receiver unit isn't really the strength of the Minnesota offense. So this, this is like strength on you know good on good, bad on bad, but so I don't I don't know quite what to expect. I don't expect Minnesota though to be able to do both of those things extremely effectively all night. Could we see something like Indiana a couple years ago where however they did it, they threw for like 400 yards with an average quarterback and some decent receivers, but you just just come out and surprise Ohio State and you make plays. And that's one thing that the Hoosiers did in that game. They made some crazy plays. There was some good coverage here and there, but uh, you know, it's one of those games where you have to execute beyond your normal execution. And and maybe that's, that's, I think that was, Minnesota will need that. If, 
Yeah, not, not just making plays, but making big plays. Because, again, I don't know if Minnesota can sustain a bunch of 12-play drives. So some of this is going to come down to, I don't know if you can hear it, but the Minnesota band is practicing behind us. They're quite loud. Uh, they, uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to sustain those 12-play drives. So some of this may come down to how well does Josh Proctor play in that, the back of that defense? Can he just get the guy down where a 20-yard play doesn't turn into a 60-yard play? That's one of the, going to be a big key for the Ohio State defense. On the other side, if Ohio State loses, what does that look like? How, what, paint, paint me a picture where, you know, Ohio State doesn't just, like, this is competitive into the fourth quarter. Ohio State actually loses this game against Minnesota. What, what would it take for that to happen in your mind? I, I think you learn, lose the turnover margin by at least two. There's a stolen possession, you know, at least one stolen possession. Quarterback doesn't look great, and therefore they try to rely more on the running game, which sets up for a Minnesota defense that is looking for that. You mentioned the big plays for Minnesota, get some big plays. You basically need to play an A game everywhere and hope for some C and D games from Ohio State and turnovers. And I think as long as Ohio State doesn't turn the ball over, they won't have much to worry about. But once you start giving up possessions, turning the ball over, and, and then can Minnesota capitalize on those turnovers? It's one thing to just stop a possession. It's another thing to stop a possession and then score on it. And so I think Minnesota would then need to capitalize, answer on those turnovers. Uh, but it's a lot of this and this and this and this. There are a lot of first-time starters for Ohio State this this week. C.J. Stroud is obviously kind of the big the big name that everyone's going to immediately think of. But there's a lot of first-time starters and first-time contributors on both sides of the ball. Which of them has the biggest game on Thursday night? Well, I, I think C.J. Stroud is going to touch it more than anybody else. So that's an easy answer. It is an easy answer. We don't like to, we don't strive for the easy answers here. Correct. And so I will say, you know, does does Jackson Smith and Jigba count? Uh, while while the focus on the of the Minnesota defense may be on Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, offensively, does Jackson Smith and Jigba then become the guy that the, the forgotten man a little bit? And if you forget about him, he's going to remind you, and he will show up, and he will make you pay offensively. So I'm going to say Jackson Smith and Jigba being one of those first-time starters that breaks out of it. All right, on the other side of the ball, I'm not going to make you name a first-time starter. I'm just going to make you tell me who is the defensive MVP of this game for Ohio State, who, who is the defensive player of the game, however you want to look at it, biggest game statistically, whatever, however you want to approach this, but who is the defensive MVP for Ohio State? How about if I give you a sneaky answer and go with Teron Vincent, a guy who has been looking forward to this game for years now because he hasn't been healthy. And so he's healthy, and the game is going to be won up front. He's going to want to win it. He's not going to have to win it by himself, but this is a guy who is going to, if Ohio State can get that interior pressure and limit the Minnesota running game, get into the backfield a couple of times. We saw Tommy Togi a couple of years ago with what, three, last year, with three sacks in the game. Teron Vincent, I'm not saying three sacks, but if you show up a couple times in the backfield and then people are just like, oh, who's that guy? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, now I know who that guy is. And you look for him more. And you know, Haskell Garrett came into last season unknown, had his incident, and became known for that. Mm -hmm. And then also had some big games and became even more well-known. So I, I think uh, I'm going to go Vincent as a, as a sneaky pick. I don't think anybody else will do that, which I'm not saying that makes me better than everybody else. <laughs> Just sneakier. <laughs> we, we talked a little bit about this on Buckeye Weekly yesterday, but one thing that's going to be really interesting for me to watch is I think the assumption is it's going to take a lot of Minnesota. Minnesota is going to have to run the ball consistently and effectively against this Ohio State defense, which is just something the teams really haven't done very much recently. The last time someone ran for more, you know, substantially more than like 200 yards in a game against Ohio State was Maryland in 2018 in the, in the crazy game that turned out 52-51, I think. Um, before that, Iowa 243 in 2017. I mean, take out the Army game in 2017 where they had 58 rushes, and the Navy game in 2014 where they had 63 rushes. Maryland had 253 in 2015. Indiana had 281 in 2014, but there was a 90 yarder in there. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of these, it's not even that teams can run the ball consistently against Ohio State. 
what does Maryland have to do to run the ball consistently against Ohio State, or is that just like not a thing you can do? What does Minnesota have to do to run consistently? That too. <laughs> um, you know, w- with with their running game, I think I don't know how many big runs I expect from Ibrahim. You know, a twenty yarder here or there would be huge. Just keeping the chains, making second and third downs um, achievable, throwing the ball. And if you win, eat, win on first down, I think would go a long way. Minnesota likes to run it on first down, maybe like 70% of the time. So win on first down, that makes second and third down a lot easier. And just by the factor of first downs, then you will get more opportunities, be able to run for more yards. And yeah, it's going to be hard to do 250 yards without like a 50 yarder in there. Mm-hmm. But if they rush for 200 yards, that's that's very very good. That's a winning number. Yeah, it is. And it could and, be. and you know, you, you always have to you, the top line total yardage number is never a good one to use and mm-hmm. I didn't have real time to calculate all the yards per carry on those games. So there is a material difference between 200 and 200 yards gained by uh, a 90 yarder and a 50 yarder and then uh, 28 carries of uh, you know, 60 yards total as opposed to 40 carries of five yards each. Like if you could, that's obviously not actually possible, but 40 carries of exactly five yards each, if you can do that or something even close to that, you know, you're you're going four, six, three, five, seven, five, six, four. I mean, like you do those kind of carries consistently. That's what's going to be a problem for Ohio State. If it's like 60, but then the next 10 carries, he's got eight yards. Like that actually is, I think Ohio State would probably take that right now. So. But that's also an indicator of a different issue, and we saw that with in 2017, 2018, where mm-hmm. Greg Schiano would say, well, if you just take away the two 45-yarders and that 60-yarder, yeah. <laughs> they only rush for 40 yards. Mm-hmm. And so there, there's, there's other issues then if uh, you're giving up one of those 50s or 260s or something like that. But, yeah, that, this is going to be, I mean, we're going to have a whole lot more to talk about in the lead-up to this game. It, what a fascinating season opener. This is this is not the uh, typical, oh, it's a lousy MAC team, and it's a noon game, and uh, Ohio State's favored by 47 points. And I guess, you know, it's basic, It's sort of the spring game in the fall. This is very much not that. You're going on the road, first-time starter at quarterback, first time with a crowd in the stadium for ha- basically half of the players on both of these teams. This is going to be a fascinating, fascinating game to watch and, and a pretty good Minnesota team. Mm-hmm. So... We will have a ton of coverage throughout the day at BuckeyeScoop.com. We will have a pregame show coming up a little bit later on this afternoon. I think our goal is to get here early enough that uh, we're doing a pregame show while a lot of you are still sitting in your offices before you head home. We'll see if we can make that happen. We're gonna have, you know, we got to figure out when we can actually get into the stadium and all that. There's a lot of questions like that. We got to kind of get sorted out as, as we get to the stadium. But we have uh, we're planning on live pregame shows, live postgame shows. Tons of coverage at BuckeyeScoop.com today and at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeScoop. So do make sure you subscribe to both of those things. BuckeyeScoop.com, access to our fantastic team of insiders, insight analysis, the Ask the Insiders board, Kevin Noon. What else could you possibly want? We have we have it all. Now that we have Kevin Noon, baby, we've got it all. So that's all. That's all BuckeyeScoop.com. Sign up today at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeScoop. Subscribe there as well. That way you get notified every time we post a new video, every time we post player we've got player interviews after the game, Ryan Day interview after the game, live pregame shows, live postgame shows, plus all the other great content you've come to expect from Buckeye Scoop, our podcasts, all that stuff, high school recruiting coverage, interviews, all that stuff, all at YouTube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. You can, at the end of this video, just hit the little Buckeye Scoop logo on the right-hand corner of your screen. It'll pop up right at the end of this video, and that will subscribe you to our channel, and then You'll get a notification every time we post a new video so you never miss a thing. Seems like a pretty good deal to me. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day. Enjoy the football tonight, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.